Hey guys, Broheen here from the Gamers Emporium channel and today we're going to learn how to kill Oryx. So to get this fight started, you must chase the little wisp at the end of the road here, um, or spark of light as you may call it, down the edge and then Oryx will rise up. The first stage to this fight is to kill adds on both the left and right sides of Oryx. Once these adds are killed, you're going to want to run around and get as much ammo as you can from these. And then immediately, there's going to be two knights that spawn on top of both of the platforms on this edge of the map. As you see right here, you want to take down both of these knights very quickly because they are boomers. And then move into the next stage of this fight. The next step to this fight, after you've killed all of the adds and the two knights that spawn on the platforms, you're going to want to watch for Oryx's movement. He's either going to move to one of the four platforms on this map. In this case, we're seeing him move to the front right platform, where he will then slam his fist on the platform, and this will engage the running phase. The running phase is basically the same as the sisters or daughters fight, prior to Oryx, so if you haven't seen that, or if you don't know how to do that, please go and look up a fight for the sisters or the daughter or Oryx's daughters. It is basically the same thing, except the fact that the starting point is where Oryx slams his fist. Step 3 is all about ogres. So the point here is to remove these ogres from the playing field as fast as possible. There's going to be four of them in total, one next to each pillar. They will spawn almost immediately, one at a time, after Oryx does his fist slam on the first pillar. So, if you're the person in the middle, definitely help out with these, but take them out as fast as you possibly can with the strongest weapons you have. The goal here is to save as much time as possible, because once the runner is finished doing his thing up top, he's going to drop down with the relic and slam the relic on the vessel of Oryx. Once this is done, you can take all your heavy or whatever you have to do, a tether maybe, and a, or a sword, and kill this vessel immediately and then run back to the center where you'll get ready for the next phase. Step 3, Part B. So this happens at the same time that the ogres are up after Oryx does his fist slam. If you are the one designated to run, you have to wait until he slams his fist, and then you're going to jump up on top of the first platform and grab the orb in the middle, which from there on you'll be torn between dimensions. Now you have to jump and you basically set your character up for as much agility as possible and jump from platform to platform while you're, the rest of your team jumps up on their platforms in order to raise the platforms that you are jumping on. Now this is crucial. Make sure you go through each wisp on top of each one of these platforms or you will not be able to grab the relic. Once you have the relic, drop down into the center, look for the ship, and find the vessel. Once you find the vessel of Oryx, hold square, and you'll slam down on him, and then you want to kill him as fast as possible, just like he explained in the ogre phase, and then fall back and consolidate back in the center of the room. Once you're back in the center, notice that you now have a bubble around you that makes you completely invulnerable to all damage. Oryx will then slam his fist again and then open up his chest and you must do a great amount of damage in a small amount of time to make him flinch or else he will pound his fist together and wipe the entire group. Once you've made Oryx flinch, you'll notice that there is now a bomb where each ogre that you killed previously died. So basically you're going to want to do a countdown and four people are going to run out at the same time and detonate their bomb which you'll see on the left hand side of the screen it is absolutely crucial that these bombs get detonated at the same time because it acts as a multiplier to do extreme damage to oryx it is also best to assign each bomb to the same person who has that adjacent pillar now once you've finished detonating your bombs you're going to have a little bit of time to continue shooting Oryx in the chest. Eventually he will move back to his starting position and the orbitals phase will begin. When this phase is started, you'll notice the screen kind of shake a little bit and these kind of rings that expand from around you. You're going to want to run around non-stop and not cross paths with any of your teammates because you don't want to kill them as things are dropping down on top of you and trying to kill you. So, rule of thumb, each pick a spot, a designated location to run, and stick to it, and basically run circles until the orbitals phase is complete. 
Keep track of Oryx's health. If you notice him below half health after your last bomb detonation, he's going to do a teleporting phase rather than the orbital phase like before. So this is going to start with six people outside of the black bubble who need to make sure that none of the adds outside to the left and right sides of the bubble get into the bubble. One by one, you all will be eventually teleported into the inside of the bubble where you're going to fight a Shade of Oryx. The Shade of Oryx is pretty powerful if your sub 300 light, that lunge you saw right there, is no doubt a one hit. So be cautious of that. Have a hunter in your group. A hunter is definitely going to help here because he can tether the Shade of Oryx, which means that you're all going to do bonus damage to the Shade of Oryx. Now, it's not recommended to use that tether unless you have at least three or four people already teleported inside to maximize the amount of damage that you're doing. If you fail to down this Shade of Oryx, it is a raid wipe. Now that we're nearing the end of the fight, you've detonated your last bombs and you've made Oryx flinch one last time. He'll drop down off the map and appear back where he originally spawns with next to no health left, or at least he should have next to no health left by this time. This is basically open range shooting. Take your strongest weapon, he'll open his chest and just unload into him until he's dead. If you fail to kill him within the unsaid time limit, it is a raid wipe, but you shouldn't have any problem with this as long as everybody knows how to point and shoot. So we've learned a few things today. This fight is a lot of rinse and repeat action. It's a lot of the same thing over and over. You just have to get a competent team and get used to the mechanics. And once you guys are used to it, it's fairly simple from there on out. So keep trying. I hope this guide helped. Please like, subscribe, and comment. Let me know what you think about the video. Share it with your friends that are struggling with this. Um, this guide is here to help. So again, this has been a guide on how to kill Oryx. Have a wonderful day.